Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will continue with the data load tool or DLT library. We will explore how to perform incremental data load using DLT. The incremental data load in ETL is the act of loading only new or changed data. With this approach, we process minimal data, use fewer resources, and therefore less time. There are various incremental load approaches, source change detection, destination change comparison, and change data capture. We implemented these approaches on this channel. If you're interested, then check the description for the link to the related videos. Today we'll cover the source change detection. In the source change detection design pattern, we use a column, either a timestamp or an auto incrementing ID to detect changes. DLT refers to this as the merge write disposition. The merge write disposition is used in two scenarios. First, if we want to keep only one instance of a certain record, for example, we receive an update for a customer from the source and we want to keep just one record per customer key. This is a classic example of slowly changing dimension type one. We keep the latest snapshot of a record in the data warehouse. We update and or insert a new record in the dimension table. This is referred to as an upsert. So there's always a single instance of a customer record, regardless how many times this record has been updated. How does the merge write disposition works in DLT? The merge write disposition loads data to a staging schema. It deduplicates the staging data if a primary key is provided. Then it deletes the data from the destination table using the primary key and inserts the new records. All of this happens in a single atomic transaction for a parent and all the child tables. Okay, enough talk, let's see this in action. In our source database, we create a new table using the dim customer. We only load 10 rows from it. This is our source table, DBO customer. The customer key is the primary key for this table. If you're new, then check out the description on how to install and configure the source, SQL Server, and the destination Postgres databases. We'll open our SQL database pipeline and create a new function that merges record using the customer key. We add the incremental load function. This function accepts two parameters, a table and a column. We built a pipeline object that loads data to Postgres in a schema called incremental. We extract the data from our source table using the SQL function, and we pass it the table parameter value. The return data is saved in a TBL variable. Now we run the pipeline and pass it the table, our source table data, the right disposition, which is set to merge, and the column and the table. And finally, we print the pipeline information. This is our incremental load function, and we can reuse it for any table we incrementally want to load using a table and the key. Let's save it and give it a try. On the first few runs, we may run into few issues, as we need to set up a few objects for DLT. On the Postgres side, we need to set up the pgstat statement. This module provides a mean for tracking all execution statistics for all SQL statements executed on a server. We can use the following script to check whether it exists. If not, then we create it. And we set the preload libraries to the pgstat statement. Using this, we can retrieve the SQL queries and the runtime details. Second, we will need to allow the deletes from the target table, but we'll do that once it is created. Let's open up a command prompt and execute our incremental load pipeline. On the first run, it returns an error that it cannot delete from the table customer and we need to enable replica identity. Okay, once we refresh our Postgres schema, we see two new schemas, incremental and incremental staging. So we'll go ahead and enable the replica identity on the customer table in incremental schema. Currently, this table does not have any data since our pipeline failed to execute. However, the staging table has records. So we'll go ahead and rerun our pipeline again. This time around, it completes successfully. Now, if we query the table, we see the initial data in it. So far, 
it looks like a basic extract and load design pattern. Let's go ahead and make some updates in our source database. We'll go ahead and insert one new row into the customer table. Also, let's go ahead and update one of the existing rows. I'll update the middle name of a customer where the customer key is 11002. So now we have two changes in our source table. Let's see if the pipeline correctly inserts and updates our target table. This is commonly known as upsert. We run our pipeline again. It executes successfully. Let's run a select statement against the customer table. So this time around, we see 11 records, which is correct. And let's examine the customer key 11002. The pipeline has successfully updated the correct record and pulled in the middle name for this customer. This looks great. DLT has simplified the incremental data merge. Next time around, we'll explore the date-based incremental load. This is all for now. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.